The Postman VS Code extension is finally here. Yes! I've literally been waiting on this extension to come to VS Code for several years now, so I'm super, super excited. Let's go and check it out. What's up, everyone? My name is James Kukwik, and I do weekly videos about web development related topics. And a few years ago, I created my most popular video of all time with over a million views talking about how I was using a VS Code extension instead of the Postman application to test my APIs. Now, I've been waiting for several years for Postman to create the equivalent extension inside of VS Code, and now it's finally here. Now, for context, Postman is an application that probably you've already heard of where we can enter in URLs and send requests to them and see what responses we get back. So as you're building out an API, you'd probably use a tool like Postman to go and test out to make sure all the things are working. And this has been kind of the go-to way to do this for many, many years. And for Postman to now be bringing their amazing experience right inside of VS Code is incredibly exciting. So let's get into a hands-on demo to show you exactly what this looks like inside of VS Code. And then at the end, I'll show you a few of my favorite tips for working with Postman that you may not have seen before. All right, now the first thing you're gonna need to do is search for the Postman extension inside of VS Code and then install it. Now, one thing to note is this is at version 0.6.2, which means this, extension is actually still in beta. And that means the team is actively looking for feedback on feature requests, bugs, etc. So if you have any of that, make sure to share that with the team or you can leave a comment with feedback below and I'll share that with them as well as they're sponsoring this video. So with that installed, we can now open the Postman extension using the Postman icon in the sidebar on the left. And then we'll first need to sign in. Now the benefit of signing in is that all of our requests and collections and environments that we create those are going to be saved to our profile, which means we can access the same things on any different, any different computer that we try to work from. Now, really quickly, can I tell you something funny and frustrating? This is actually the third time recording the same exact video because I'm in my new house with my new setup and I forgot to change my screen that I'm recording from the other one to the actual one that I meant to be recording. So anyway, third time's a charm. All right. So now that we have this in place, we can start to make a few test requests. Now, in this case, I have an Astro application running, which has a very simple API for working with JavaScript and web development related jokes. Now, if I go back over to the browser, I can, I can actually show you where I use ChatGPT to generate these jokes, which I thought would be kind of fun. So I asked it to give me 20 JavaScript and web development related jokes formatted as a JavaScript array. And then I realized I might want to have users be able to search by index for a given joke. So I asked ChatGPT to update this to have an array of objects that each had an ID and a joke. Now down here, you'll see it, the last ID is an ID of 20. We'll come back to a bug that I have in my code in a minute. And I'm curious if you'll be able to tell me in the comments what this bug is or why it's happening. So I have this basic set of endpoints in an Astro application. Now Astro is a framework that you might know as a static site generator, but actually has full server side capabilities. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But I have two different requests in this file. I have a get request to get all the jokes, a post request to then create a joke, which just kind of simulates creating a joke because this is not actually connected to a database. And then lastly, I have the ability to query a joke by an ID. So let's go ahead and test these out. Inside of Postman extension, we can create a new request. We can send this to, you can see how many times I've done this. So we can see send the request to 4321, localhost 4321. API and jokes. That's where the API lives. So we'll send the first request just, just to get all the jokes. We can say this is going to be formatted as JSON and we can see all the jokes that are in inside of here, including some nulls. I'm actually not sure where that is coming from. I don't know where I even did that. Maybe figure that out later or maybe not. If you see anything, let me know. The good thing is that the request in general is working to be able to retrieve all of our jokes. So the next thing I want to test is being able to re retrieve a specific joke. So we can send a request to slash joke slash and then an index or ID of one or three or something like that. So that works. And then we can also test out a post request. Now a post request, not only are we changing the method, we also want to send a body inside of here. And we're going to send the body as raw JSON. So we'll format it that way. And then inside of here, we get a, an editor to be able to work with JSON. So we get autocomplete for our brackets and parentheses. And we can say this joke is going to be, uh, why did the developer choose JavaScript? Because they couldn't handle C++. 
Now, I don't actually believe that. I don't know how to write C++ though myself. It's just the first thing that came to mind. If you have an alternative joke that you think is funny for JavaScript and web development, let me know in the comments below. But what this should do is now simulate actually creating that joke. And uh, we get a 404, which is appropriate because we're sending that to the wrong place. So this post request should go to slash API slash jokes. We can send this and we, we get back the joke that was just created with an ID of 23. So let's take a look at the code in here and maybe you can help. So if we look inside of the code, we get our new joke. We don't really update. We don't really even add this to the array of jokes. We just take the ID of an incremented length of the array and then we return that. So a little bit of a bug in here where if we go back to, we can go back through the history and try to query to get all the jokes again. So let's open this one, let's request this, and then we get back another null at the end of this. So if you know why this is happening, let me know in the comments below. I've actually got it figured out now, so I'm curious if you can figure this out. So we're able to test two different gets. We can test a post, we can test put patch delete, we can also do a bunch of other things in here that I've never even used before, which is pretty neat. But one thing we might wanna do is start to organize these into collections. So we can create a new collection of these requests and the, what we can do is name this something relevant to what we're working on. So we can call this the Astro Jokes API. And then inside of here, we'll wanna create a representation of each one of those requests. So we can have our local host jokes for our get request. If we send this, this actually saves, saves this. So that should be saved. So that request works. We can also update this to be a little more reader friendly. So we can say get all jokes. Then we can save that it saves automatically. We can create a new request. So let's do not a rename, but an add request. And we'll say get joke by ID. And we'll send this to get the third joke, for example. So we can send that. That one should be saved. And then lastly, we will send or create our post request. So we'll say create a joke. And in the body, we'll go to raw. We'll go to JSON and paste in that same joke from before. And then send that. And that should be saved as well. So now we have the three different requests associated with this collection, which is associated with this jokes API in Astro. So that works well for organizing all of them. The other thing you might wanna do is actually use environment variables with Postman to avoid having repetitively type in things you can use in environment variables and then also for private credentials, which we'll see in a second. So I wanna take a look at an existing demo, which is the uh, this blog, which allows you to log in and log out with an Astro application. So it takes advantage of the server-side capabilities of Astro to handle authentication so we can log in this way with email and password. And then also in this application, what happens is after we run that, we can see cookies are associated with this user that is logged in. So we can be able to test this whole process inside of Postman as well. Now, really quickly, if you're interested in learning how all of this stuff was built, that's what we actually build in my Astro course at astrocourse.dev, where we focus first on creating statically generated content with Markdown and content collections, et cetera. And then we get into the server side capabilities of Astro by connecting to a database, adding authentication and comments, et cetera. So a bunch of fun stuff that you can check out on astrocourse.dev. So let's start to test this application. Now we can create a new HTTP request and we're gonna send this request to localhost 3000 slash login. Now that specific request is going to be a post and it needs a body of email and password in the format of form data. So it's a regular HTML form submission to the back end. So I can add in the credentials in here. So I'll add my email and then we'll add one for password. So let's go ahead and send this request and we'll see a couple of things. One, it returns back with an HTML page, which is actually the way this works because it returns a redirect. But the other thing that you'll see is you can actually see the cookies inside of Postman that were generated for us. So you can see the user ID and the user email cookie were created for us associated with that domain of localhost 3000. So that's really nice. Now I mentioned one of the things we might wanna do is kind of not have to manually type in passwords and then not want them to be exposed for everybody to see. So let's delete that for now. And we, 
we can come up to environments and create an environment where we can store variables associated with this environment. Then we'll have a variable of password and we can type in that same password that we just had, but we can mark this as a secret. Now what this means is other people on the team would be able to leverage this, but not actually be able to see what that value is, which is a win. So in this case, I'm gonna type in this password. Again, can't see it here, although you can hit the view icon if you want to. But with that environment set, the last thing to do is to actually name this. So let's call this Astro Course Local. All right, so that has been saved, and then we can come back, and inside environments, you can see that we have our Astro Course Local that we can choose from, and then we can reference those variables with this double bracket syntax. And now we get IntelliSense for all of those environment variables that we can now choose. And now it will inject that into the request for us, which is really nice. We could also do this for the actual URL or whatever we want to, but we can set configuration variables and then secret credentials and then have those be shared across teams that are working and testing the same types of things. So that request will now work, which is great. So now we've incorporated both collections and environment variables. And there's one more thing I want to show you. Let's say we have some sort of API that we just kind of copy in uh, the request to that API, but we want to know how to write that in JavaScript, for example. Well, this can also generate code snippets for us. So if we choose fetch, it writes out a full fetch request in JavaScript. You can also do JavaScript jQuery or XHR. I've never actually written one of these from scratch myself, but you can generate code in all these different languages to be able to, to copy that from Postman into your application and actually have this logic working right inside of the application that you're working on. So that's the basics of how the Postman extension works inside of VS Code. I can't tell you how excited I am to be able to use this directly in the same editor as my code because I've been a long time Postman user. I just moved away from it because I didn't have the VS Code experience and now it's here. Like I said, this is currently in beta. So if you have feedback or ideas or bugs or feature requests, make sure to let them know or just leave me a comment below and I can pass on that feedback to the team as well. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.